So in this section, I'll talk about Lox section in Signals. So Signals Lox is powered by ClickHouse. So as you can see, it's very powerful and it can handle high cardinality data quite well. So in the main screen, which you see, you can see a query builder here. So here you can uh, do any sort of free text search or you can pass your attributes and then filter based on those attributes. Let's just take an example of a free text search. So let's say you want to uh, parse logs, which has something called root underscore client. So if you just type it here. So basically it by default uh, add body contains root underscore client. And then once you run query, uh, now you see all the logs which are filtered are based on root underscore client. You can also add more filters here based on the attribute. Suppose you want to see uh, logs coming from a particular uh, service name. Uh, I don't think there is any service name here, but let's say any other attribute, uh, for example, let's say stream. So let's say I want to filter logs based on coming from a particular stream. You can just filter it here and then this will get filtered. So this is very powerful. What you can also do is you can choose the, the format in which you want to see the locks. So we provide three formats by default. The default format is raw format where you see uh, locks in this format. And if you want to see more details of this, you can just click it here, right? And uh, this supports both JSON and table view so that you can get more details on that. If you want to add any filters here, for example, suppose you want to add this in the query, you can just click this here. And by default, this container ID is added as a filter here. So this is an easy way to add any sort of filter for any past attribute which you have. Uh, to directly add these filters here and then you can see uh, the list of logs being filtered based on those. What you can also see is different other formats. So you can also choose how many lines of logs you want to see. For example, here you want can go to two lines and three lines. So max here is two lines. So you can see uh, two lines. So based on the amount of compactness you want to see in the logs, you can choose that. You can also see other format like uh, this is the list view format where you see all of them in details here. If you want, you can just copy all the log fields here and then we use it to share with here, any of your colleagues, etc. Uh, or you can also choose a column format. Uh, and then here you can choose what are the uh, fields you want as the default thing. For example, suppose you have data coming in a stream, you can add that and the thing is there in a stream or level, you can just remove that and then uh, the attribute here will adjust based on that. And this is just a complete, uh, you can go in finite scroll here and if you want to go up, you can just go up and do like this. So yeah, so you can choose different formats in which you want to see the logs you can add attributes which, you, which are important to you. What is also interesting is you can add these groups by and create aggregations based on what you want to see. Suppose you want to group by a particular level of flocks. So by default, as soon as you add a group by field here, this will create a time series chart of the number of log lines present for each of the type of levels. So as of now here, there is only one type of level. So there is a single chart, but suppose there are multiple levels or let's try to add a different field. Uh, let's say stream, right? So let's group by stream. So now there are, there is one stream, which is a DR. You can see how many logs are coming for the stream. You can also uh, format this legend so that this appears a uh, uh, more beautiful. So you can see the number of locks coming for a particular state DDR. 
what you can also do is by default the aggregation is based on the count but you can for example do some other aggregations let's say sum based on say severity number like I, I don't think it makes sense but just for an example you can plot a sum here uh, by default the severity here is zero so nothing is being plotted here but I guess you get the idea that you can plot based on different aggregation attributes here and then see data based on that. You can also uh, view tables here. So for example, if you are, if you want to uh, count based on the number of STDRs, so let's just say count based on the type of the stream and then count it here. So this table shows you for a particular type of a stream, what is the uh, count of the log? So this is around 16,000 here, which we also see what is being shown here. So the difference between table and time series is that the table uh, aggregates this across that whole time period and time while on the other hand, time series aggregates like for particular, like for each point of time, it shows you a data point. Uh, you have, we have also more details here, like so you can, uh, you can aggregate these logs based, you can order these logs based on different things. You can have operations, so suppose count is greater than something and uh, have, op having operations etc also be added here. Right, so let's just remove all of this here for now and let's just Okay, simple keep a time series graph. You, you, what I want to show you is how easily it is to create dashboards and alerts from here. So you can, uh, so suppose you are here, you have filtered certain logs and then you have aggregated based on certain uh, parameter and then you can just go ahead and uh, go ahead and make it to a dashboard. What this will show you is it will take the same dashboard take the same filters and create a dashboards directly here and say you can just say uh, logs dashboard and then save this dashboard here and you will be able to start seeing this directly right so this gets very powerful directly from seeing the exploration of logs to the alerts uh, to the dashboards is just a matter of few clicks which through which you can go directly there uh, the same thing can be done for alerts. For example, if you want to uh, set up certain alerts here, suppose you are filtering for a particular type of logs and then you are in the time series mode, uh, you, you have count of the logs and then suppose you want to set up alerts based on that. So uh, you can see like as of now, there are like 3.8 thousand logs which are coming in with this particular type of filter. But suppose you want to set a threshold that, okay, if this number crosses 3600, then you want to set up an alert. What you can do is you can just set up a threshold here and as soon as the threshold uh, is crossed, then it will throw you an alert, right? So basically, you can monitor any specific attributes in alert like a particular stream error type or a particular service throwing a particular alert or uh, a particular type of logs and then you can monitor it and then set up alerts based on that. And making this from uh, the logs explorer to alerts is very simple as you can see. And uh, if you just set up a alert name say above 3600 then you can just create an alert rule and basically this alert rule will get created here and anytime it starts crossing it it will show you a firing status and it will send you notification in your notification channel so yeah that's what uh, uh, our new logs explorer is it's quite powerful you can specify the attributes you want to filter based on and very easily set up uh, dashboards and alerts based on top of them.
As we discussed, Signals has all the three signals, metrics, traces, and logs in a single application. One powerful thing which it enables is easy correlation across different type of signals, for example, traces and logs. So if you take this sample application, here you have see all the metrics related to this application, and we can go deeper into it and see the traces related to a particular application. Now, one interesting thing which you can do is suppose you are looking to dive deeper into this app in this trace and you see detailed trace view of this with more details on where it is spending time on. What would also be helpful is to also see the trace logs involved in this traces in context. So if you pass your logs in context in this traces, which open telemetry allows, what you can also see is, uh, for example, if you select a particular trace, you can see related logs which were executed corresponding to this. So in Signals, we have made this very simple. You can just click this, go to related logs, and it will just filter out all the logs which are corresponding to this trace ID and show you there. So as you can see, you can get more details on the execution context and what were the log lines which are printed when a particular trace was executed. This can get very powerful for you to debug issues when they're happening and help you solve issues much faster.